stamina movements for cycle two, starting with reaching bridges. Now, if uh, you don't want to work on a position of uh, support, you can do these from the ground and just do shoulder reaching bridges. Hip still extends, work on trying to bridge from the center and then arm reaches across to extend that stretching line further up the, the ribs. Now this one isn't going to be uh, as intense uh, from other points of view, but if your shoulder or your wrist doesn't want to do that position of support, this might be a better option um, uh, to go with and get your intensity elsewhere. The next progression would be starting and staying from or returning to a crab position. So here I'm going to turn my hand around, push through my feet. The bridge comes from the lower body first and then reach at the very end. So notice that my goal here is to lift my hips. My goal isn't to reach my arm. My arm just helps to extend the bridge line further up. But I'm trying to get my hips up near or above my, my knees. So that's my goal is to get my hips up, not to just reach my arm and switch sides like this. So that's not um, uh, focusing on the bridge, it's focusing on the reach. We want to focus on the bridge. Then finally, the last progression for reaching bridge will turn over with each one. So if I start from all fours, I'm going to bring my leg underneath and transition, hit my reaching bridge, and then come back underneath and reach. And I can do that with a little bit more fluidity. Now notice what I am not doing is I'm not turning over this way. This way is a lot clunkier. I'm turning under. So I'm bringing that leg underneath. This is a lot more fluid, a lot less clunky. Um, but choose the one that feels the best and most natural and fluid for you. It should feel fluid and rhythmic. Um, this is, or we're performing these for stamina. Uh, I want you to touch into your, your deep ranges, but you don't have to sit and hold uh, bridges as though we were working on, uh, on range. Next one will be two weightlifting movements. The first one is going to be an outside clean. So here, notice that both of my feet are pointing off my center line. They're not pointing forward. I want to get my knee out of the way of the bell as it passes. This is an outside swing and to clean, I catch right up on top. Now, best to see this uh, from the side. Notice that I dip both to slow the weight down and I dip again to throw it up. So this is still powered from my lower body and then the line comes all the way up uh, to my upper body, the strength line. What it is not is just trying to rip up this bell with like a dynamic bicep uh, curl. So if you feel like your, your upper body is doing all of the work, one, you might need to get a little bit more weight in your hand. And two, you might need to practice that, that feeling of, uh, of dipping. And then uh, afterwards, so you're gonna do reps on one arm, then we're gonna do some one arm kettlebell jumps. So these can be a hanging squat, hanging squat to toes, or a jump holding onto that bell with just one hand. So I'm gonna have to do a lot more upper body bracing to brace with that bell. And then we repeat it on the other side. So I do my cleans. Again, my toes are turned, my foot is turned inward, not forward, inward. And now my, my swing line just goes straight back and straight up. So it's not gonna bonk my, bonk my leg. And then when I'm done, one arm kettlebell jumps. So we're gonna try to jump uh, this cycle, which means a lot more squat. So I bring more muscles into the jump versus the hops, where I stay more upright and I work more just on rebounding and using my springs. Here I want to use a lot more of my springs and create more force. So I jump up higher and I sink down lower with each one. Uh, next one, plank to lunge. So here we'll use plank as our base. First version of plank to lunge. So I'm going to bring my foot up and then I'm going to assist extending my upper body on top of the lunge and then I'm going to come back down, switch my stance 
And this is my second rep. I'm assisting, coming on top of my leg and coming back down. To escalate this, I'll do it without assistance. So here, I'm gonna bring my legs up and then I'm gonna extend on top of that lunge without using my hands. So, and you can use a combination, maybe one hand or a little bit of an assist or a little less. Again, make it feel fluid and continuous for you. Uh, back to the weights. <clears throat> We're gonna do a dead clean, which means the weight stays right in between my feet. I'm gonna rip it up and then squat it. So what we call a short cycle means one clean, one squat. Put the weight down, rip it up, and squat. Squat as low as you care to go, um, as low as you can control. It's a weighted uh, movement and it's a stamina movement. So we are working on squat depth. This might not be the place to work on your absolute rock bottom deepest squat. Go where it feels natural and comfortable for you to squat down to. If you'd rather, because of the weight, um, use a squat block, great. Do all of it with a squat block. And then afterwards, after we do um, our dead cleans uh, to squats, uh, then we're going to do 30 alternating swings. So one arm to the other arm. If you don't feel comfortable doing alternating swings, you can do one arm swings. Straight swings are fine here uh, as well. On alternating. Alternate on the way up. And notice that my thumbs are up. Even if my thumbs go square or turn back, I would bring my thumb up so you catch on the way up. Don't try to catch as the weight is coming back down to you. And also, if you do it this way, don't go over the top with your hand flat. You're getting a lot more clunky. Thumb up, you can insert, you can change hands while the bell floats. Um, without having to remove the other hand or go over the top of the other hand. So you have a lot more control. Um, 30 of those. And then last one, we're going to do a little roll the candle, starting with hitting a butt balance. So my feet are off of the ground, and then I roll back and I use either a push, so I base, or I brace, or both. So I go for my butt balance, and then I try to get my butt up in the air. Butt balance, butt up in the air. Um, or whatever approximates that uh, for you. If you need some help, um, if you haven't done um, shoulder stands before, uh, let us know, we'll, we'll give you a hand uh, finding one that works well for you. Uh, the next progression, would I just use a base instead of a brace, so I'm just pushing my arms in, and again, coming back up uh, to a butt balance. So I'm making more base with my hands, um, but I'm still lifting my hips up off of the air. And then last progression is I'm going to come all the way up to my shoulder stand and fully extend. So there I'm not using a base or brace. I'm just balanced on my shoulders and I create my extension um, off of the shoulder. Notice that from this position, I should still be able to turn my head side to side because I'm loaded on my shoulders. I'm not loaded on the back of my head. I'm not using my neck to hold me up. Um, again, if, if you don't have the range in your neck to do that, don't force it. Um, just go to where it feels natural. The shoulder stand for one might be right here. I might reach my legs over to give myself a little more balance. I'm just fine my shoulder stand. Great, that's perfect. And then up top, um, I can create a little more of a layout as well. So if I do candle and lay out here, I can do layout here and here. So now I'm controlling both lines up and down with, um, with more core support. But the idea there is that we're rolling between butt and shoulder and then bracing. So there's lots of different versions of that that you can make work. Um, and that's stamina.